Welcome to NREMT, EMT exam practice test. Our topic today is cardiology and resuscitation. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Which is the final collection point of deoxygenated blood? A. Aorta. B. Vena cava. C. Left atrium. D. Left ventricle. The correct answer is B. Vena cava. Explanation. The two largest veins in the circulatory system are the inferior vena cava, which is the final collection point for deoxygenated blood from the lower extremities of the body, and the superior vena cava, which is the final collection point for deoxygenated blood from the upper extremities of the body. Number 2. Pediatric patients under 3 months of age and immunocompromised patients who appear to be experiencing shock should also be treated for which of the following conditions? A. Sepsis. B. Hypothermia. C. Tachycardia. D. Apnea. The correct answer is A. Sepsis. Explanation. These patient demographics indicate an increased chance of experiencing sepsis when the patient goes into shock. The patient should be treated for sepsis immediately, in addition to receiving treatment for shock. The other conditions do not apply. Number 3. What is the goal temperature when practicing therapeutic hypothermia? A. 30 to 33 degrees Celsius. B. 32 to 34 degrees Celsius. C. 33 to 36 degrees Celsius. D. 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. The correct answer is B. 32 to 34 degrees Celsius. Explanation. Patients who suffer cardiac arrest can benefit greatly from carefully administered therapeutic hypothermia, a practice which intends to reduce the patient's internal body temperature to between 89.6 degrees and 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 to 34 degrees Celsius. Number 4. Jenny, an EMT, needs to deliver chest compressions to a 10-month-old infant. What is the appropriate hand placement to deliver compressions to this patient? A. Two fingers over the infant's sternum. B. Heel of one palm over the infant's sternum. C. Hands stacked, fingers interlaced, with the heel of the bottom hand over the infant's sternum. D. None of the above, because a 10-month-old infant should not receive chest compressions. The correct answer is A. Two fingers over the infant's sternum. Explanation. Infants only require light pressure during chest compressions, which they are able to receive. Both full hand options would provide too much pressure and could be dangerous for the infant. Number 5. What is the primary cause of cardiac emergencies in adult patients? A. Congenital issues. B. Vegetarian diets. C. Genetic predisposition. D. Poor lifestyle behaviors. The correct answer is D. Poor lifestyle behaviors. Explanation. Most cardiac emergencies in adult patients result from poor lifestyle behaviors such as diets high in processed foods and trans fats, smoking, high stress, sedentary behaviors, and obesity. Congenital issues are more likely to cause cardiac emergencies in pediatric patients, especially newborns and infants. Genetic predisposition may cause some cardiac problems, but it is not the cause of most emergencies. Vegetarian diets are not positively correlated with cardiac emergencies. Number 6. If a patient appears to be experiencing a cardiac event and fluid can be heard in the lungs, what condition are they likely experiencing? A. A heart murmur. B. A heart attack. C. A stroke. D. Heart failure. The correct answer is D. Heart failure. Explanation. Fluid in the lungs, especially when heard in conjunction with low blood pressure, is primarily associated with heart failure. This occurs when the heart is unable to effectively pump blood out of the heart, so blood pools into the lungs. This occurrence does not occur with the other outcomes listed. Number 7. What blood pressure reading should, without fail, be considered an emergency? A. 110 over 70. B. 120 over 80. C. 140 over 90. D 180 over 110.
The correct answer is D 180 over 110. Explanation. Patients who monitor their blood pressure at home are recommended to immediately call emergency services if they receive a reading of 180 over 110. Readings of 120 over 80 and 110 over 70 are considered normal blood pressure readings. 140 over 90 is considered high blood pressure but not a hypertensive emergency. Number 8. Jason is a 58-year-old male who has a history of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and periods of high unmanaged stress in his life. After a particularly difficult day, he receives a phone call about a large outstanding bill, of which he was not aware. He is about to end the call when he drops his phone and his arm goes limp at his side. Jason's wife hears the crash and comes into the room. She calls his name, but he does not appear to hear her and gazes blankly into the distance. His mouth is slightly agape. Suddenly, he seems to snap back. He turns to look at his wife and is momentarily confused, but then seems to regain himself and verbally tells her he is okay. What condition is Jason exhibiting symptoms of? A shock. B heart failure. C. A transient ischemic attack. D. A major heart attack. The correct answer is C. A transient ischemic attack. Explanation. Jason has many of the risk factors for a cardiovascular event to occur. In this context, he shows many stroke-like symptoms similar to those that take place during a transient ischemic attack, small stroke-like episodes from which people appear to fully recover. He would not have shown a recovery had he experienced any of the other situations listed. Number 9. Which structure serves as the electrical stimulator of the cardiac muscle? A. The left ventricle. B. The synotrial node. C. The aorta. D. The tricuspid valve. The correct answer is B. The synotrial node. Explanation. The synotrial node is the primary stimulator of electrical activity in the heart. The other structures listed play a role in blood flow, but do not deal with electrical stimulation. Number 10. Which condition refers to a hardening of the arterial walls? A. Atherosclerosis. B. Arteriosclerosis. C. Stents. D. Plaque bypass. The correct answer is C. Stents. Explanation. Stents refers to arterial walls losing their elasticity due to age or lack of care, such as from long-term smoking. Stents are medical devices that can be implanted in the body. Atherosclerosis refers to blocked arteries. Plaque bypass is not a real condition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.